10 News begins with breaking news. Yeah, let's get to this breaking news out of Oakland. Multiple people injured after a construction site collapse. You're looking at video that shows what happened there. And police say nobody was killed here. Everybody has been accounted for. So we're going to continue to monitor this situation, bring you the very latest as we get it. Meanwhile, students are back at Steel Canyon High right now. The day after deputies arrested a 14 year old student for posting a picture of a gun with the caption, don't go to school tomorrow. I'm Virginia Chow. I'm Jason Martinez. Now it was a BB gun. We've learned that, but there's still extra security at the school today just in case. And 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is live there in Spring Valley. Mimi. Yeah, Jason, Virginia, they actually have extra deputies patrolling the entire area just as a precaution, even though they've let students and parents know that there is no threat on campus. Sheriff's officials do say that the student behind the threat admitted that he sent that picture and he acted alone. The disturbing image was originally sent to one student, but spread quickly on Snapchat last night. It shows the 14 year old holding a handgun with the words F Still Canyon at the top of the picture and the caption don't come to school tomorrow across the middle of the screen. So a student told school officials about that threat and deputies were notified immediately. They tracked down the student and his parents and found the gun, which turned out to be a BB gun, like you just said, Jason. Now, just after midnight, a text alert went out to parents letting them know about the threat that an arrest was made and everyone was safe to attend school today. Students tell me they were still feeling pretty nervous walking to class this morning, especially because even more rumors were spreading through the night and morning. One of my friends did warn me that there were two others involved. I do have a strong faith and I know that so I'm even carrying my rosary in my pocket right now and I know that if anything comes in my way, I can stop it, whatever it is. Now there weren't any other students involved in this threat, just the one that was arrested. We're not sure what's going to happen to him just yet as the investigation continues, but the school did want to take extra precautions and they canceled an assembly after some students expressed their concerns about going to that today. We're live in Spring Valley, Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Thanks. So happening now, lifeguards showing off a new fleet of rescue vehicles to promote water safety this weekend. Yeah, and for the first time, two local teens are sharing their harrowing near-death experience to warn others heading to the beach. 10 News reporter Jim Patton joins us live from Mission Beach. Jim? Yeah, the message those teens want to share is basically respect the beach and respect this jetty. Look down the way there, you can probably make out a couple of uh, kids that are walking along the rocks. It's a popular activity, but the teens that we talked to today say they learn the hard way. You better stay aware. And that's when I turned around, I saw it, and I screamed out to her, wave, wave. When the wave hit us, I looked back and I saw the wave take him. Just a moment earlier, 17-year-olds Leo Bardo Gonzalez and Gregoria Mellencypher say that they were climbing along this jetty in South Mission Beach to take pictures. We continued and we kept going out. It was windy but manageable when Leo Bardo heard an ominous sound and turned to see what it was. I, could, I, had, I had no time to react, so I was screwed already. You know, the, the wave hit me, it picked me up and then slammed me on the rocks. What the teens say must have been a rogue wave left him knocked out and wedged inside the rocks. His head is shaking back like this and his fingers are like moving like this. And like there was like blood all over his head and like his eyes were like half open, but they were like, you know, like like he was having a seizure. From a distance, San Diego lifeguards had spotted the teens heading out and were already en route to tell them to get to a safer area when that wave struck. Leo Barta was rushed to Scripps Trauma Center with three fractures to his skull. He still has paralysis on the right side of his face, but hopes for a full recovery. And he and Gregorio also hope that their experience will help others avoid the same. Don't turn your back to the ocean. And, you know, growing up, that was one of the things that my dad taught me. But on this unfortunate day, May 6th, I turned my back to the ocean. Yeah, Leo Barro is now hoping that that paralysis on the right side of his face will subside in the next few months. If that doesn't happen, he may actually have to get some surgery. Jason, you mentioned off the top about the lifeguards and the new vehicles. Actually, that, that happened earlier. It was uh, up the beach a ways, and they have 35 new vehicles with their uh, promotional program with Toyota. This year, they even have, for the first time, one of those vehicles is a hybrid SUV. Reporting live in Mission Beach, Jim Patton, 10 News. Hope everybody stays safe this weekend, Jim. Thank you. New today, man is in the hospital after he flipped his car 
right here landed upside down in this march marsh near Derry, Mart Pond in San Isidro. Officers lowered a rope. They were able to pull that driver up. You can see him right here starting to struggle to go up this hill. Sky 10 captured this video from the rescue this morning. The driver expected to be okay. Police are investigating if this crash was DUI related. Breaking news update. A man is stabbed outside of all places at Denny's in El Cajon. Police say it started with an argument after a minor crash. Police say the man and two passengers were in a parked car when a truck with three people inside collided with a car. Two men got out of the truck and started an argument. One of the men in the truck pulled a knife on the passenger in the car, and another man in the truck chased another passenger in the car and stabbed him in the neck. He was taken to the hospital. He's expected to survive. The three suspects, though, got away. Some new information here. The crime rate in San Diego has reached its lowest level in decades. Mayor Kevin Faulkner and Police Chief Shelley Zimmerman were at Police Department headquarters to make the announcement. Now, the new report shows a 10% decrease in crime from January to April. That's compared to the same time last year. It shows that San Diego is one of the safest big cities in the nation. Faulkner and Zimmerman say it comes at a good time as visitors are expected to flock to San Diego for Memorial Day weekend safe. As we head into Memorial Day and the start of the peak travel season, this is a great reminder of the incredible work that our officers do to keep San Diego safe. The report also says that every category of crime decreased in the county compared to last year. The mayor says this report shows the San Diego County police, everyone here, do an effective job at community policing. So today, President Trump is finishing up his overseas trip in Italy, where he will meet with world leaders at the G7 summit. ABC Stephanie Ramos has more on the last leg of this trip and the controversy that awaits him back home. Here we go again. Another big moment for President Trump on this final stretch of his first overseas trip. The president now in Sicily to meet with world leaders at the G7 summit, including a reunion with Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. It's great to have Prime Minister Abe, a friend of mine. After telling NATO leaders in Brussels to pay up yesterday. 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying and what they are supposed to be paying for their defense. This is not fair to the people and taxpayers of the United States. For the next two days, talks at the G7 will include global economic issues, the Syrian civil war, to the fight against ISIS, and Russian aggression. Russia, a consistent topic here in Washington as well. Sources tell ABC News Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and senior advisor, is among a number of White House staffers and former Trump campaign officials who are likely to be interviewed by the FBI in connection with the Russia investigation. Kushner's lawyer said the first son-in-law would cooperate. Writing in a statement, Mr. Kushner previously volunteered to share with Congress what he knows about these meetings. He will do the same if he is contacted in connection with another inquiry. Kushner's communications with Russian officials was not listed on his security clearance paperwork. His lawyers say it was an error. Jared Kushner is not a target of the FBI investigation. However, FBI agents do want to ask him about his interactions with former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and Russian officials during the campaign and transition. In Washington, Stephanie Ramos, ABC News. Happening now, seven new streets in the South Bay being named in honor of local service members killed in combat. Chula Vista lawmakers and families of the fallen warriors are there for the dedication ceremony. It's going on right now. The streets are in the recently developed Village 2 neighborhood of Otay Ranch, one of them being named after Sergeant Michael Martinez, who died in combat in 2007. His father talked to us about how proud he is of his son. Uh, always had this great smile on his face. Uh, Happy-go-lucky kid uh, of, the, of the three boys that we had. And um, when he joined the service, you know, we were a little surprised, but it was something he really wanted to do. And uh, he believed that, you know, why not, why not me? The dedication ceremony started just minutes ago at Heritage Road and Santa Victoria Road in Chula Vista.